within the first five days of owning the game, I'd racked up over 30 hours of playtime. I think I'm sort of getting over it a bit now. I'll probably take a bit of a break from it and then come back to it later. But for $13, the $13 that I paid for it, uh, that's a bargain. And I really enjoyed it. It's a good game. I found it really immersive, especially at first. There's so much detail in it. There's a lot that you can not just manage, but I guess overanalyze or customize it the way that you really, really want it. But after a while, that level of customization started to feel like just a job to do. For every square inch in a game, there's just so much that you need to put into it. And sometimes, like, when I'm expanding and building new habitats and things, I just almost can't be bothered, like, <laughs> I just don't want to do it, because I know I'm going to have to do all the gardens, all the education facilities, I'm going to have to customize the buildings to make sure they all match, and it gets a bit much sometimes. There have been a few frustrations with the game as well. Um, some things that I think are bugs, some things that I think is just game design. So I abandoned the tutorials early. Um, they had a lot of information on them. They had a good overview, I think, of the functional aspects of the game, but they were really fucking boring. Um, the pacing was really slow, the dialogue was really slow, and I'm sure some people will enjoy the sense of humor that's in it, but I did not, and so it was quite agonizing, suffering through the terrible jokes that were being delivered so slowly, and I didn't see a way of skipping it. Um, I also, you know, I just bought the game, I was pretty keen to get stuck into it. A lot of the appeal is around um, expressing my own creativity, like I wanted to design the parks, I wanted to flesh them out the way that I like, and you didn't really have that working on other people's zoos. Sometimes the information that I needed was in the tutorial. For instance, this building that I really struggled to place where they wanted me to place it. And you can see on the screen where it says to like hold down Z and press your arrow buttons, or in my case, use the mouse to do it. But that's exactly the information I needed to place that building right. And instead I was like Googling it. I couldn't figure it out. I ended up doing it a really difficult way to get it done. And it took me forever to do it. And then sometimes the information that I needed wasn't there. Like we get into the tutorial and the first thing it tells me is to start looking at animals, but it hasn't actually told me how to look around the zoo. And again, I ended up Googling that to see how do I spin the camera around so I can get a different view. Maybe what would have been useful for me would have been like a quick fire version of it. So abandon the storyline, abandon the dialogue. This is how you do stuff. I just needed the click and dirty, this is how to do. And then maybe I would have uh, learned a bit more before getting stuck in. Yeah, I abandoned tutorials early, and I think that it wasn't necessarily a mistake because I got to do what I wanted to do, but I fucked it up a lot because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so I kind of had to learn the hard way, but I still enjoyed that more. <laughs> I'd rather learn by doing and mess it up rather than suffer through that tutorial. Nothing inherently wrong with the tutorial, the good tutorial. It just really wasn't for me. Delicious blood pumpkin. I really like that the enrichment items are animated. Um, you can see your animals interacting with them, um, climbing on climbing frames, standing under the waterfalls. It's just a really nice touch. And that's true of a lot of the detail in the game. The so small exhibits are really good for making money. I started referring to them as like frog farms because I just let them go for it and then quick trade them out. Um, and you can make quite a lot of money from doing that. It's a nice little boost. But unfortunately you have to do it because otherwise you get crowded and they're not happy. In my first suit that I made, I didn't understand how to change the barriers. So when I decided to make an enclosure bigger, what I did was I built more barriers out from it. And then I deleted the interior ones, those two there for instance. And then suddenly all my animals were escaping uh, repeatedly. And I didn't know how to fix it, so I abandoned ship. What I didn't know is that you're actually supposed to just drag your fences out. Can add another joint in it and then drag that joint out. So I'd, I I wish I had known that, but again, that's probably something that's in the tutorials. If I had just uh, played through those, I'm sure I would have known that. So it's really nice you can just pause the game while you build. Once you're kind of used to what you're doing, it is reasonably intuitive. So the first thing that I learned the hard way is that every enclosure starts with this fucking long grass and most animals don't like it. And if you set up your terrain exactly how you like it and then look at the animal's enjoyment of it later and it says that there's still too much long grass, it's a fucking pain in the ass to find out where that long grass is that you've missed. So what I tend to do <laughs> is just erase it all, kind of set it to 100 and like the max size and I just color it all in. So the fact that this is all free to do is really really nice. If this cost money it would be problematic I think, especially for like when you're first starting out. Yeah, it's a new lizard! <laughs> Oh, 
When I first started, I hired an educator, um, and I didn't realize, but she didn't do any work for five years. Uh, and the reason for that is because I didn't, I didn't create any animal talk points. I didn't realize it was something that you had to do. Now I need to connect this thingy. On the now monitor, you gotta link the seating. Then we have to go to our work zones. We have to add it individually. So I wish that there was like a group select tool. Um, where you could just say everything in this area, including any new buildings, is part of this work zone. Because it's a pain in the ass when you put in something new. And then you have to go back and edit it manually like that. If you forget to, then you're in trouble. You research animals that you have, and you, and you can research diseases. So I really like that. What I don't like is how frequently it spams you with these notifications that your research is done, and that you then have to clear those notifications, and there's a little animation that goes with each of them. So it's not even an instant thing, you kind of got to sit there and watch it come up, and then confirm that you know, and you know, you're trying to focus on your economy or your animals, and it's like, hey, I did a thing again! Cool, huh? So the guest management system is really good. Um, you can click on any individual guest and see their needs and how well you're meeting those needs, as well as their thoughts, which are very strange, like how does the temperature look good? She needs an umbrella. Um, so they probably want an information center so I can buy umbrellas. Before I do that, I can check, so I can go into facilities and I can see what has high demand, what has low demand. And it says the information center is efficient. It doesn't say that I need another one. So the other cool thing with the guests is that you can just hover over this one here and it gives you just a breakdown of your guests in general. So I could see, um, I should probably be putting in some more benches or tables. I could afford to build more food and drink stalls um, and make money off those. And I could be doing more for education. I think education just gives you conservation credits. Um, it doesn't necessarily give you financial gain. It's just like a thing you should do. I feel like we should lose conservation credits for selling balloons. Um, that is a particular pet peeve of mine. I don't know why we sell balloons. That is pollution. And your guests will even release balloons. And you watch them float away. I hate it. The financial breakdown is really good. You have this whole finances page. You can see under your income. So my ticket sales are like such a small percentage of my income. Most of it comes from um, my shops. Adoptions are through the information center, so that's actually giving me the most. Then souvenir sales, that's what's fucking balloons. There's some other merch as well, but really it's the balloons. And then food, and then drink, and then umbrellas. And I can also see my purchases are like my construction costs, so I kind of ignore those. I just compare my income, which is 17k here, to my ongoing expenses, which is 11 check that I'm sustainable. But the breakdown is really helpful, I like the layout of it. I haven't tried the transport options yet, because uh, in the tutorials I really hated the fact there was noise pollution from the trains. I don't think that was fair for the animals to listen to the fucking choo-choo going around all the time, so I never built one. I'll probably play with that in the future. So like, why am I guess stuck here? What is the problem? I don't understand what you guys are stuck on. Now the only way to fix it is to reset the game. If there was one thing that was going to stop me from playing this game, that's probably it. You guys better not be stuck again. We're just enjoying the lamppost, are we? Because it seems like they get stuck in unconnected areas to the area that is actually of concern and you don't get like a notification when they get stuck it's just a bug i think what more could you want the construction is really interesting there's a lot of options a lot of different styles different parts and you can put them together however you would like to, to create designs that are yours. Now one cool thing is that once you've built something, um, as long as it's grouped together, you can either copy and paste it or you can save it as a template. So like this roof over here. So now it's reasonably easy for me to place the same kind of thing over here. This is much easier than having to recreate it all over again. One of the things that I really 
started to dislike is that beautifying it, so planting all this nice looking scenery. You can see in here when I first started, I'm like, wow, beautiful cherry tree, got some nice like mosses, some rocks, some of the flowers, wow, it looks so pretty, I'm so happy. And then you start getting over, not even that far away, just over here, and I'm like, I can't be bothered anymore. There's so much to do, you have to place it all like separately. I can't just copy and paste a whole section of it. So I actually need to do all the planting all around everywhere. And it does make a difference, and you'll see in this one, this has a 6% scenery rating, so it is not impressed with my scenery. And you can make it look really nice, but I just resent the fact that I have to. I really don't want to. I don't want to have to. Do you guys like that? Yeah, you guys like everything. You're amazing. Okay. But it may not be a criticism of this game, it may just be a criticism of the genre. I mean, that's the whole point, is that it's a management game, right? And you manage it, you micromanage it. And that's part of the immersion of it, is that there's just so much to do. And so much you can keep building on, it's like, it never ends, you can keep doing stuff. But feeling like I have to do it is just, ugh. It just becomes work. The paths are an absolute pain in the ass. I wish that there was just a pavement option, so you could just pave an area and they could walk all over that area. Instead of trying to put the path on, like, the biggest that you can, and then paving as much as you can. And having these weird little bits in the middle. Um that no one can walk through. I really despise that. The other thing is like trying to build facilities around that. So if I was to build like a small animal exhibit, I can't build it on an existing path. I have to like build it off from it and it just, if I build it like that, you now it's connected with these two paths so people can't just walk around it. And once those paths are in place, you can't really build across them. It's a pain in the ass. So what you have to do instead is go align to grid and choose that. I don't think you can turn that up, no. So then you gotta go up all the way around it. Which, I'm glad you can at least do this, but like, holy moly. What a pain. And then you connect that to your other paths. And that is still a bit janky as well. And you have all these like, loose bits in the middle again that you need to like, decorate or do other things with and that your guests may or may not get stuck on. So overall, I think it's quite a lovely game. The music's great. It's aesthetically pleasing. You have a lot of control over it. Um, I really enjoy the design elements of it. The animals are cute. The guests and stuff are okay. And the, the rules you have to work around, like guests not wanting to see staff building, but staff needing to be close to enclosures, that kind of stuff makes it quite fun. Almost like a, it's, it's like a little bit of a puzzle, it's not a particularly difficult puzzle, and it's one that's hard to get wrong, but you can kind of optimize it, and that is enjoyable for a time. But the amount of effort that you have to put into every small section um, to keep everyone like m optimally happy is really detracting from the game. If it was just a nice to have, then I would far prefer that, but it's like, it, it has an impact. And because it has an impact, I feel obliged to do it. Because I feel obliged to do it, it feels like work, and it doesn't feel like I'm enjoying myself anymore. Uh, so the guests getting stuck in the doorways is an absolute bummer. But I also had staff not using guest pathways, uh, and some of the janky building that does detract a bit from the game. I'll probably take a break from it now and come back to it later, but I'm sure that I will come back, and especially once I'm hit with some sort of vision around what I would like to build. I've really enjoyed Planet Zoo. I will no doubt enjoy playing it in the future as well, um, but for now I'm going to try something else.